Hey, how's it going everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for tuning in. Today I'm going to be going over seven tips that you guys can use to get over minor injuries. Uh, unfortunately, in the last game that we had this past weekend that you guys saw the vlog uh, last video, I picked up a really minor groin injury that I've been dealing with the last couple days. I've missed training and I'll probably miss the game this weekend. So. I wanna run through with you guys seven things that I like to keep in mind when I get injured, and even if it's a small niggle, basically, uh, it's, these are things that I can keep in the back of my head to feel better about everything and to get back as soon as possible. Let's hop into it. All right, so let's talk step number one, which is playing the long game. I actually just finished a fantastic book by Simon Sinek called The Infinite Game, and it really gave me perspective, which I thought I would share with you in this video. So the idea about The Infinite Game is that we are finite players, right? Like our life is finite. We are born and then we die, but we're playing an infinite game because life moves on even though, even though we live for a certain amount of time. That can be the same mentality that you have about injuries. So with my injury, with this little groin pull or groin strain, my first thought was, okay, you know what? I have a lot more of my soccer career. This is not the end of the world. I'm gonna play the infinite game by resting now and not trying to push through because number one, this is preseason for me. Number two, this is really minor injury and if I nip it in the butt now, it'll go away in about a week, especially with the rehab that I'm doing. So those are things that I keep in mind. Again, when you get injured, it's all about the infinite game. You still have time, you still have all the resources that you can put into that in order to make sure that you're playing long game with the injury. All right, so number two is going to be the RICE acronym. So that's REST ice, compression, and elevation. Now this is something y'all maybe have heard already with ankle injuries or knee injuries, but actually this was really helpful for my groin as well. So what I did was immediately after, cut all activity. I was actually able to lift about two days later without any pain, so that's kind of aside from the point which I'll talk about a little bit later, but rest from the running and the jogging, then I iced it, I had both ice bath and then concentrated ice on that area. Compression in the mnemonic compression devices or if you use some sort of wrap that you might wrap with your ice pack, that can work as well. And then the elevation and that's just putting a couple pillows under your foot, making sure that the blood flow is working into that area. So make sure that you're using that again, rest, ice, compression and elevation during the first part of your injury rehabilitation. Okay, so number three, we're gonna talk about isometric exercises. So with pulls and strains, and obviously again, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a physio, but I've had enough injuries to know, and I've worked with a physio literally yesterday, so I kind of know what the rehab looks like. I'm not gonna walk you through my rehab program, but I'll show you a simple exercise that I do for the groin, uh, groin pull. So I'll set you guys up there. So, an isometric exercise is one where you're simply holding a position. So for my groin, uh, I'm gonna do it on my strong side just so I can demonstrate this to you. But an isometric hold is something like a Copenhagen. So I'm holding up like this, using my groin and my abs to make sure that all the blood flow goes into that area and it starts that recovery process. So I start with isometric, then you move to eccentric, which is that same movement and lowering down. And then there's concentric, which would be lifting back up and doing that with your muscle. That I'm not sure what the word is for it, but it's, uh, it's tightening your muscle essentially. So though that would be the step-by-step -step process that I would use for the groin strains or any other strain that you have. But make sure that that eccentric movement or excuse me, the isometric movement is happening first because that's gonna speed up your recovery time tenfold. 
Okay, so number four is we're gonna talk about building slowly. Now, I'm working with a physio because the professional team that I play for down in Australia has a team physio that we work with. He also works in a clinic in the hospital and has all the gadgets and dry needling and all that other equipment there. So we can actually go see him in the hospital, which is a really easy way for us to get treatment. He's also got a hot tub and other stuff, um, which you may have at your gym or at your home if that's easy for you guys. So the thing that I would say about number four is make sure you're going through rehab slowly. I know it's absolutely painful. Trust me, I've been there. I have, I've had double hernia surgery. I've had a torn pectineus, which is in that same groin area. I've had bilateral stress fractures, like the whole bit and it sucks. I know it sucks, but you got to stay slow with rehab. Otherwise it's going to make the injury last a much, much, much longer. A quick story about that, that I think might help you guys relate to this. But the reason I think it's so important to go slow is because I actually got the hernia injury six months before I got surgery, but I put it off because I said, you know what, I can, I'll be fine. I'll recover. Lo and behold, I missed my entire junior season. But if I had said, you know what, I'm gonna go slow, I'm gonna do the rehab and I'm gonna get the surgery soon instead of try to play through it, I would have actually had my junior year in college to play soccer. So it's kind of a bummer. I don't really regret anything because things happen how they happen and that's just my mindset towards things. But I will say if you go slower with the help of the doctor or the physio or the PT or the chiro or whoever you're working with, make sure that you're loading correctly because that will dramatically increase your opportunities to recover faster. All right, let's talk number five, letting pain be your guide. It's really easy as soccer players, I think, to push through a pain that we're having in our legs or our chest or our upper body, because that's what we have to do. We struggle through that physical challenge. But I will say when it comes to injuries, and I know you all know your bodies the best and nobody's gonna be able to tell you what's painful for you and what's not painful for you, but know where your pain tolerance is and what is a workout pain. So soreness from your legs after a good lift versus soreness in your legs or your calf, or in my case, my groin, that's an injury soreness, not just a soreness, soreness from exercising. So let pain be your guide make sure you're following that because if you're continuously having pain, that's not a good thing. So make sure that you're pain free before really starting to build back up into full strength. All right guys, so number six is making sure that you know the small percentages of times that I think it's okay to push through that injury. I'm not telling you guys to push through all the injuries. I'm saying there are very, very small times. There's a very small number of times when it's okay to push through that injury. One being you've got five minutes left in a final and you feel your groin kind of pull a little bit and you're like, okay, you know what? I'm just going to push through this till the end. And then I've got two months off for off season or a month off, whatever, so that I can rehab and be okay with it. Um, that's pretty much the only circumstance would I would say go for it. Otherwise, it's really not a good idea. And I want to reiterate that, that that percentage is so, so, so small. Because again, as we talked about in number one, play the infinite game, play the long game with injuries, because it's really not worth it. Especially I'm only 24. I have lots of playing time left in my life. And I want to make sure that I'm 100% for those years to come. And if I keep getting injury after injury, because I'm not being smart with my recovery, then, and I keep pushing through that, even though I physically, I could do it. It's just not smart and it would hold me back probably years uh, from playing the long term that I probably could at the end of the day. All right, so perhaps one of the most important things when we talk about injuries is what do you do with the time now that you can't play? Um, and that is something that I had to deal with when I had the hernia surgery because hernia surgery is completely debilitating and not in a poor, poor me way, but simply because you have surgery on your pubic bone, which is the core of your entire movement system. And so you really can't do much. And what I would encourage you guys to do is find activities that you can do that occupy that space or that competitive nature or whatever soccer or athletics brings to you. Try to find other outlets for that energy that you have. So for me, it was journaling, it was getting into music, it was doing other types of exercise like swimming and 
low impact biking, low impact things that I could do that would basically get my competitive nature out so that I wasn't, I didn't have all this pent up energy. So very, very important to rewire. And this is really different. Like I, I, I trust me, I know this is incredibly difficult to do, but it's very, very important for your mental health to reorganize all of those, all that energy into something else and making sure that you're doing that in a really healthy and productive way. All right, guys, that is it for the video. Thank you so much for tuning in today. That is seven things to keep in mind when you have minor injuries. Hope you enjoyed the video. Smash the subscribe button, and I will see you guys in the next one. And as always, be awesome, guys. Take care.